Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful, rainy, Sunday morning. You're so used to me saying on this beautiful, sunshiny day, but today is a beautiful day as well, even in the rain, for rain is good. God sends the rain to wet our dry places, the dry places in our lives. We thank God for the rain and sunny weather. That's what's out there on the marquee, the church marquee. So I'm so glad to see each of you here in worship on today. And um, the one disadvantage to rain, though, there is a negative side, is that it, 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 it's, it, it's, it, it hinders a parade from going forth and outside events like picnics and such. Uh, but other than that, rain is good. And then there's one other thing. People tend to not attend church when it's raining, but they go to sporting events. You know, this rain doesn't stop people from going to sporting events and such. But for some reason, when Sunday morning comes and it's raining, it does hinder attendance to church. And so pastors do know that. But even on this rainy day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I see that we do not have any first-time visitors on today. And remember last week's Sunday, sermon about the few in attendance where two or three are gathered in his name. Jesus is indeed in the midst of us. And I, but I do like to say welcome to, I'm so blessed to have some special visitors with us on this morning. Uh, one is my childhood girlfriend that I, we grew up from like three or four years old. So we've been lifetime friends and some of you may be familiar with her as a good Samaritan in New York that feeds the people who are digging in the trash cans and stuff like that who gives them money or buys them food. And that's Marilyn Johnson, my dear girlfriend, and her sister, Vanita Kay, who lives in Florence. And they came up and spent yesterday with me and are with us today in worship. So I'm so godly proud and happy to have them with us on today. A couple of announcements. I'd like to say that, um, first of all, I'd like to just say that Barzell and Ernest Manning, most of you are familiar with them, the, African-American couple from Ridgeway, who has been uh, worshiping with us actually since February. They have not been here in the past couple of Sundays for the fact that Barzell is an ordained Baptist minister. Um, she was ordained in the, in the Baptist church, and so she is literally a reverend, she said. And so I said, well, we can reference you as such, minister, reverend, or whatever, whichever you wish to be called. However, they haven't been here for the past couple of Sundays because she was asked to preside and preach at a relative of her, hers in Salisbury, North Carolina for three weekends of this week. And then she has a wedding that she's performing in Charleston on next sat Saturday, that weekend. And so they've been absent and I just thought I'd uh, let you know of their absenteeism. However, I got a sad message from her on this past a uh, week that uh, her sister just died, um, a 66-year-old who lived in um, Spartanburg or Greenville area, and she let me know that her sister passed on this past week. So let's keep the Manic Barzell's family lifted in our prayers as, she, as they are dealing with that. And then, of course, a lot of you know, uh, well, some of you, not a lot of you, but there's a few of us who are aware of Jim Calder's death on this past week who was a longtime member of this church long before I ever came. And I understand that his children were raised here, baptized, affirmed, and they were longtime members of Ascension. And when they relocated, um, they became members up in Prosperity, uh, South Carolina, and he's a member at St. Luke's uh, Lutheran Church. And they will, um, uh, his, they will have his memorial service today at 3 o'clock at St. Luke's in Prosperity, and I do plan to attend that memorial service on today. Um, I just want to say that Jim was one of the constant um, Christian leaders in the church. Yeah. Every year. He sure did. And told us updates and that was so scary. That's right. That's he right. was such a kind man. He was such a kind man. When and fun. Yes, he was real funny and, and, and full of life. That's right. Thanks, Carol, because he did. He, he was a man of humor and full of life. And Dolores, I was like, Dolores, 
when I spoke with Dolores Richardson on this week, and she was very close to uh, Jim and his wife, Jane, and uh, Connie Setzler, and so she was saying the three of them used to be good buddies, and she was so heartbroken over, Jim, over uh, Jim's passing. And I said, Dolores, isn't it odd how, I bet everybody might feel this way about Jim. Uh, we're all born to die, we're gonna die, but why is it that we feel like, how could Jim call to die? And so she said, everybody's been saying that, and so we all have the same sentiment that, like Jim couldn't die, but he appeared to be younger than what he actually was, too. So Laura was surprised at how old he, he was. So let's keep the Calder family lifted in our prayers. And so I just want to report to you that we are still getting good uh, donations online, online donations for the um, Investing in God's Future at Ascension. So people are still investing. And remember, we got that $50,000 budget line that's going to be matched. Uh, let's uh, lift and continue to lift Carla, Carla in our prayers today. She came down with something on this past week. And I checked with Jacob on the Jake this morning. He said she was feeling better. But however, it deterred them from attending our little eat out that we had on uh, this past Wednesday up at Lizard's Thicket in um, up in the Sands Hill area. We had it up that way for those of our members who reside out there at that neck of the woods. It was uh, low in attendance to, the, to a degree because of Carla and, and Jacob's absence with Carla getting sick. But our members, our visitors, that, is it Amaker or Amaker? Amaker. Amaker. Y'all know that A-M-A-K-E-R kind of word is Amaker. OK, they were there with their little son, Micah. Uh, they were there, and um, Dolores Conte, who visits with us, and then our new seminarian that will be joining us in October. She was introduced here last week, but because she's not going to be uh, starting her field work until October, she went to attend her church today, so she's not with us today. Well, she showed up for the, for the eat out that um, dinner, and it went well. We had a good time of fellowship, and so, I visited David Lever in the hospital over at Richland on this past week, and he was pretty low, as Mike said, and so we just don't know what, what, what's going to happen. Uh, but however, just a few minutes ago, I got a text from Mike saying that I guess he had recovered enough that they're sending him to rehabilitation. Isn't that a positive? That's positive progress when you get discharged from the hospital and go for rehabilitation. So he's going to be in, I, I believe, the the rehabilitation center is in Compass. It may be over there by Richland um, Hospital. So David is on, in the recovery stage. And of course, I let you know that I did speak with the, the Lord and told you about Bar the passing of Barzell's sister. Our hymns today that we'll be using are the um, ELW hymns, which are the Reddish Cranberry hymn, hymn book that you can find in the pew in front of you. Um, next are the altar flowers this morning are given to the glory of God by Jake and Carla Gorlick in memory of Jake's uncle recently passing and Carla's grandmother recently passed. So those, the flowers are given to the glory of God by, by them on this morning. Amen. Next week is coffee break. It'll be the fellowship at 10, 10 a.m. in the fellowship hall. Coffee, juice, and donuts provided, but feel free to bring something to share if you'd like. That's next Sunday. Please be mindful of the notices in both the front and back of the bulletin. Are there any other announcements at this time? What you got, Billy? And that's going to be where, Billy? Pilgrim Lutheran Church. Pilgrim, that's out of what, Lexington? Where? Yeah. Okay. The damn church, because it's over there by the Lake Wherry Dam. Okay. All righty. Good. And what time is that? Two o'clock. Okay. So be mindful of that. Our Lutheran men in mission taste um, on today. Okay. If there are no other announcements at this time, we're standing for confession and forgiveness. Found on page four of our book. It's up to you. Blessed be God, the one who forms us. 
Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful, God, you have revealed the ways of justice. We fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us in the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone, hearts that love and adore you that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. <clears throat> the first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 50, beginning with verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, 
What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 10, well, 103, verses 1 through 13, and we will read responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. Our second reading is from the 14th chapter of Romans, beginning with verse 1. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the eat, weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that we might be Lord of both the dead and the living, so that he may be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall praise, give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. We're standing for the gospel acclamation. More about Jesus. 
us we would hear words that banish hate and fear words that bring eternal life the gospel of jesus christ more more about jesus more more about jesus more about jesus we would hear the gospel of jesus christ the holy gospel according to saint matthew the 18th chapter Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him, and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what, he, what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant? as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also, my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here in this 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, last week's lesson was of Jesus' teaching on reconciliation between one who has been offended and the offender, which might result in the inclusion of two or three witnesses, and then eventually maybe including the church body. And then Jesus assured the disciples that during those times of reconciliation, as the required two or three were gathered in his name, he would be among them in the spirit of forgiveness. As the familiar words of Jesus are stated in verse 20 of last week's text, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Now as I expressed last week, I reiterate here that Jesus' teaching was actually on that of forgiveness. That is what reconciliation is. And I was lifted up last week how conflict comes in every community where there's more two or three people, conflict and offenses arise. And Jesus tells us how to deal with those situations. Now here in today's gospel text, 
the very first scripture which immediately follows last week's passage, verse 21, is a continuation of this context of Jesus' teaching on forgiveness. As Peter asks a familiar question of Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Jesus answered, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Now it is worth mentioning here that whereas in some translations, Jesus' answer is 77 times as read in your hearing today, in this um, uh, ESV version of our text today. I am most familiar with the King James Version. My friend Marilyn and I was discussing this on last week when we talked about which might be correct. The, in one translation it says 77 times and in another translation it says 70 times seven. There is a big difference between the two equations. Because I mean seven times 70, or 70 times seven is what, 490 times. That's beyond, you know, you stop counting by that point. But there's theological debate that Peter's use of the number seven and Jesus' answer of either 77 times or 70 times seven might well be the fact that biblically, seven is the number of perfection. And then whereas we humans are born of imperfection due to our sin natures, Jesus' intent for us is to strive for perfection. There's none perfect but God, but Jesus. But Jesus intends for us to strive for perfection and that is particularly in this area of forgiving. Forgiving those who sin against us over and over again. No limitations, infinitely. That's on and on and on and on. Stop counting. But let's face it, for us hum humans, flawed individuals as we are, forgiveness is a complicated thing. Amen? It's just hard. Not just for people in general, but even for us Jesus-loving, Bible-believing Christians. Forgiving is a hard pill to swallow. This message is going to be tight, but it's right today. It is what it is, and it's for me, as well as everyone who sits in the pew. And I wish others were here to hear this, because this Forgiveness is a thing that's causing this world to just go amok right now today, unforgiveness. And it's the lack of love. We may in some cases have the mindset, I forgive you, but I won't forget it. Now, you know there's something you just ain't going to forget it. But we say we forgive. But it often ends up not being absolute forgiveness from the heart. They're saying a thing, I forgive you, and then there's believing and feeling a thing, forgiveness from the heart. Now in the Greek, the Greek word aphiemi, however you say it, Bridget, I'm, I was never too good at pronouncing my Greek words to my seminarian there, Bridget, aphiemi, which means to forgive, it means to release from one's grasp. It is noticed that forgiveness is like letting a small bird escape from your cupped hands. However, with us humans, it isn't a bird in our cupped hands, but our offender. That is as if to say, when we do not forgive one who offends us, it's as if we bear the burden of carrying that person around from day to day, not just in, un in, in cupped hands, so to speak, but actually on our back. Imagine that, walking around with the person that, that you're holding that grudge against, not releasing it. Imagine that. Instead, we tend to hold on 
to the memory and the pain of the offense. I read that as people, we treat forgiveness as if it were one of life's additional options, something we can take or leave alone, but it's not. Forgiveness is a basic requirement for every believer, for every believer. And in another place I read that forgiveness is not easy, so it's confirmed that forgiveness is not easy, especially when it comes to the deep wounds of life. Now, it might be done quickly when someone steps on your toes or bumps, bumps into you in the hallway. It's easy to say, I'm sorry. You say, okay, I forgive you. But when we face significant hurt, there's all good reason stops because of the hurt. We freeze in the trenches of resentment, bitterness, and revenge. The only thing is, we lose. Our energy is zapped. Unforgiveness zaps your energy. Unforgiveness is a sin, and God hates sin. Unforgiveness has a lot to do with our egos, our pride, heartbreak, hurt feelings. After all, we're only human. In each of our lives, offenses, and hurts will occur. They're inevitable. At times we may be offended, and at other times we may be the one who offends. Intentionally and sometimes unintentionally. But of course, some things are not as easy to be forgiven as others, am I right? If we were honest with ourselves, I'm pretty sure that each of us here today has that something or some things where we draw the line regarding forgiveness. And we may find ourselves saying, well, because of that, I'll never, I could never forgive them for that particular thing. We know it's true. Cut and dry, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. It's like, never will I forgive them for that. Oh, but how blessed we are that God is not like us humans. Thank goodness that forgiveness is not hard for our God. If it were, oh my God, we would all be totally lost, doomed in our wretchedness. But thanks be to God, we have hope in Christ Jesus. As in our Lutheran tradition, as done even on this morning, every Sunday, we come corporately confessing and asking God for forgiveness. And we believe and trust that we are truly forgiven through our repentance. The psalmist reinforces this belief as expressed in today's psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. All your diseases. As we declared to our, in our prayer of the day, in the beginning of our worship, Oh, Lord God, merciful judge, you are the in inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the very nature and heart of God because God is love. Love and forgiveness go together. And because of this nature, this forgiven nature and heart of God, we are the better for it. That's why we aren't just completely lost in wretchedness. For no one is too sinful. Not anyone is so sinful to be forgiven by God. Repentance is what brings about God's forgiveness. Forgiving others is what also brings about God's forgiveness. So if God forgives us, we must forgive others. Whereas in some instances, when I was saying that there's just one or two things that if it happens, I can't forgive the person for that, it may seem impossible. 
but with God, all things are possible. And then lastly, I want to end, I want to say that rather than reflect further in our gospel lesson in regard to the example that Jesus gave about the unforgiven wicked servant who was forgiven and didn't forgive, that's the same with those who, us who walk around with unforgiveness. God has forgiven us our sins and then we're like the wicked servant. But I'm not going to elaborate on that today. I'd like to ref reflect briefly in that first reading of Genesis, chapter 50, which is one of the most moving stories in scriptures about forgiveness. That is next to the salvation story about our Lord Jesus. That's the greatest story. But this story about Joseph in particular happens to be one of my favorites. It is a fascinating story, and it begins in the 37th chapter of Genesis, and I can only give a brief in this a long story. Jo Joseph is the younger of his brothers, and he was a dreamer. He was favored by his father Jacob, who had made him a coat of many colors. Jacob's favoritism created animosity between Joseph and his brothers. It was a severe case of sibling rivalry. We know, some of us, we can attest to what sibling rivalry is like. And this is where sibling rivalry started here, this story here in Genesis. There's nothing new under the sun. So Joseph's brothers kidnap him, throw him in a pit to die, and, but he ends up getting sold into slavery. His father is told by the brothers that he, have been, he has been killed. And Joseph spends many years of exile in Egypt where he was sold, and is even imprisoned at one time. But Joseph also experiences the favor of Pharaoh, and he is exalted to a level of authority. And it is said that Joseph went from the pit to the palace. There comes a great famine throughout the land, except in Egypt, where Joseph was. When Joseph's family comes to Egypt to get food, Joseph is in the position to enable them to get it or disable them from getting the food without them knowing who Joseph was. When Joseph later reveals himself to his father and brothers, he lets the brothers off the hook, so to speak, whereas they think Joseph might seek revenge. To their surprise, he shows them mercy and provides a place for them and their children to live. This is what's reflected here in today's gospel text at the beginning of our reading here today. Now that Joseph's father, Jacob, has died, his brothers are afraid, like I said, that he might get revenge on them. You know, it was, he had a time to do it. If ever there was a time to do it, this was it. And literally give them exactly what they deserved. But because Joseph loved and honored his father, his brothers make an appeal on behalf of their father for Joseph to spare them. What they had not counted on was Joseph's love for them. Yes, Joseph loved and honored his father, but he loved his brothers in spite of what they had done to him. Joseph's love for them and forgiveness was what gave him the heart to treat his brothers right. Revenge is not Joseph's intent, as the brothers learned when Joseph reminds them of their past Ill, Ill intent. See how Joseph may have forgiven, but he didn't forget. But he said, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. You see, had it not been for Joseph getting sold and Ended in a, 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 and ending up in Egypt and being in prison where he did eventually gain a status of authority, he would not have been in the position to even save all of his family in the time of famine. Even this story here, we see that God can take a bad situation and turn it around for good. We also witness the power of love and forgiveness Joseph's forgiveness for the wrong done to him by his brothers is a parallel story 
to the story of the forgiveness of our sins, that Jesus was sent by God to bear the whole world for the whole world in dying on the cross just for us, for you and for me. Because of the debt of sin, which hurts God, we didn't deserve this forgiveness. But because Jesus paid it all, Jesus paid off sin's debt through his death, burial, and resurrection. Our slates are wiped clean. Thank you, Jesus. We are washed and forgiven, baptized and set free. There's an alternate verse of the Lord's Prayer, and I forgot to ask the Lord to put it in our worship on today, where the words, forgive us our debts or forgive us our trespasses, are not used, but rather it reads, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. When we intentionally offend others, we sin against them and against God. And as we pray for forgiveness, so we are called to forgive others time after time. And I found written in closing this interesting question and answer. So how are we to forgive especially those actions against us that seem unforgivable. First of all, we do not make believe that the pain isn't there. Forgiveness is not a self-impressed amnesia, we don't forget. It is not pretending that nothing really wretched occurred to us, but let us remember that the risen Lord still has his scars. The evidence of grievous human brutality inflicted on him while on the cross never disappeared. The wounds remain, but they are mended. Thus we are enabled, each of us, to forgive from the heart even when the pain in the memory remains. Because of God's grace, the ability to forgive is a gift. And so I close with this final question for each of us to ponder. Who do you need to forgive today? Pray for someone who may need to be forgiven. You may need forgiveness from. Pray for that person. And so we pray, forgiven Christ, teach us to forgive. Amen. We're standing for the hymn of the day.
As the called people of God, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As the prayers of intercession are the prayers of the people, uh, I invite you to read a petition of prayer. and This invitation is to our visitors and children alike. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to practice intentional meditation. Help us to forgive each other. Practice patience and choose well from over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind. For those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy. We especially pray for these members of our church family who are in the hospital, at home, or in care centers. Comfort their hearts and ours with your powerful presence. Tommy Boozer, Donna Clark. Ava Hudson, David Lever, Pat Martin, Lisa Mosley, Dolores Richardson, Jean and Joanne Ruth, Debbie Schumpert, Charlene Van Patten, Dorothy Van Patten, and for those others we name aloud now on our lips or silently in our hearts. Betty, Betty Schneider. Deborah Buck, the family of Paul Zellman, and Harlem. Those we have either named aloud on our lips or silently in our hearts, grant each of them a measure of your healing virtue. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Be our hope, O oh God. We remember with thanksgiving your disciples who died in faith. May their trust in your promise be our protection and our hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Let us pass the sign of peace with our brothers and sisters. God's peace. Amen. We're standing for our offerings. Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, at the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Jesus invites you to the table. Come, eat, and live.
We're standing as we are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and that the spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks. Thanks. Be to God.